L.A. Don't miss the L.A. Wine Fest. Go to LAWineFest.com for your tickets today. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cindy Laverty Show. Thanks for staying with us. I want to remind you that the show can be heard on Fridays from 10 to 11. This is all Pacific time. And we have Encore Plays on Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. and Sundays from 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific time. And all shows are archived on my website at cindylavertyshow.com. So you can re-listen there or uh, share it with other friends and family, whatever you want to do. My guest today is Nicholas Cardaris, and we're talking about his book, his life story. But his book is How Plato and Pythagoras Can Save Your Life. And we're going to get into that in just a second. Nick, thanks so much for being here. So you're in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And you're recovering from that. Did, when did you end up in rehab? Because this is kind of a short segment. I want to get to that and how you made yeah. this transition. Well, it's funny. I had been to rehab before my coma. Um, oh. So I, had, I, I had a couple of stops and starts with treatment and trying to get clean and sober before my coma. And so, uh, you know, failed attempts at recovery. And right. There were, there were moments, you know, I had we could put short periods of time together, but nothing substantial. There was something missing in my recovery. And eventually, as I mentioned to you, I went into that coma and it was coming out of that coma. I didn't go into rehab again, but at that point I realized, um, I realized that I had a, uh, the light went on in my mind that uh, what I started the journey of exploring what my life was all about and what would give my life a sense of meaning and purpose. Did something just, happen to make you do that? Or did you just all of a sudden wake up and become smart? <laughs> you know, the way I describe it in the book, something is different once you've touched the void. Um, right. You know, you, you wake up from having been so close to death, and, you know, it's an existential crisis. It's a crisis of being. And uh, it was coming out from that that I realized, w- w- what have I done? What am I doing? And what should I be doing? And, and initially what I did was I started taking trips to the library and taking out books on philosophy and religion, spirituality. I was trying to figure things out. I was profoundly trying to figure out if there's a thing called the soul and, and how I can connect to what I'm meant to do with my life. And, and that seemed very important to me because I was really afraid at that point that if I didn't figure that out, I was going to kill myself. Right. Um, and so that's, that's how this whole process started. And part of that self-discovery and spiritual discovery was really immersing myself in 12-step programs. Uh, I went back to school. I went to graduate school. And keep in mind, it had been 17 years, uh, four nightclubs, and, and a fatal overdose since I'd been a student and undergraduate at Cornell. And I went back to graduate school, and initially I got my master's degree in social work because I'd realized that when I started connecting and helping and being helped by other people in my 12-step program, that started feeling really special. And I realized pretty quickly that being of service was a big part of the meaningfulness equation. Isn't that just so much the truth that when we are of service to other people, Uh, our life just changes? It takes on meaning. Every wisdom tradition, every religion in the world talks about that. They all come to that sort of same truth. And then I discovered that firsthand. You know, for so long I lived my life of of, of pleasure. I live my life of feeling good right. as opposed to doing good. And in fact, I just wrote a blog for Psychology Today where I talk about that, the difference between feeling good and versus doing good uh, towards happiness and how that makes us feel whole. You know, so a lot of us chase feeling good, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Right. And it's, it leads to a profound emptiness and, and, and ultimately not feeling good or not feeling happy. Uh, and really, a, a sense of being whole comes from being of service, like you said. So you went into this real contemplative place where you say in the book that you were right. reading everything you could get your hands on. Right, right. It was it was an intellectual and an, a spiritual and experiential journey. So I was reading a lot of books about different kinds of consciousness research, philosophy, psychology. But I was also doing these long meditations. I was taking you know multiple hour bike rides and sitting by water and meditating and and really trying to sort of make sense of things. And I, I did this for a period of time while I was a graduate student getting my social work degree. And then I did eventually get my social work degree. And then I entered into a, a doctoral PhD program that really explored some of these similar issues also. And so I... Yeah, I forgot to say, and I apologize for that, you are a doctor and you're a professor, a college professor as well, Right. right? Right. I'm a clinical professor at Stony Brook University and I'm an adjunct professor at the Institute of Transpersonal Psychology. 
which were are both schools that I got my degrees from, by the way, also, which is kind of a nice full circle journey also. Talk about a major life transformation and metamorphosis. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's kind of incredible. Well, as you were going through this, at what point in from the time of the coma till the time you came out, were in the cardiac unit, were you in a daze? What time? What, when? How long did it take you to start getting clarity of thought? That's Can a good you? Question. Um, you know, that's a good. I, I know that my medical records indicate that the first few days I was conscious. I don't remember that well. I was uh, actively hallucinating. I thought I was on. I thought I was either in Hong Kong or on the Rio Grande. Wow. I thought I was, I thought I was in a boat. It's interesting because I've studied a bit in my academic studies a thing called near death awareness, and it seems that. You know, hospice okay. workers talk a lot Nick, about. you hear the music. we got to go to break. When we come <laughs> back, we're going to talk about Plato and Pythagoras. Stay with me. You're listening to the Cindy Laverty Show. I'll be right back. You know, movies and television tend to glamorize 